okay members um just before we we start just to confirm that we have gary middleton we have morris and we have catherine coming in by by a star leaf and we have full attendance then between those in the in the committee room and star leaf so nobody has delegated their their vote um so just to remind those on star leaf that if you want to ask a question you can use the the function just to raise your hand to let us know that you want to to speak okay, okay i can see you all there so as currently colin has taken up the the po temporary post as minister for communities and um, i've been nominated by my party to fill the vacancy for the chairperson of the committee and procedures on the 18th of june and just to remind members that if you have mobile phones and other devices, if we can just um, put them on silent. Okay. So, to remind people, we will be today, at the end of our meeting today, the committee will consider some legal advice on Stanton Order 45A, along with a draft committee motion. And the committee will also revisit the strategic planning. So, if members are content, we will move into closed session at the end of today's meeting. Content. Okay. So agenda item one then is apologies and we have full attendance, so no apologies have been received. Item two is the draft minutes of the previous meeting, which are at page five. Obviously it was a while ago, but if members have any comments just from their reading of the minutes or anything that they are not content with. If you're happy enough then we'll we'll agree the minutes as recorded. Um, members all somebody coming in there no Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> members also received a bundle of correspondence accompanied by a memo from the clerk on the 17th of June and the clerk's memo was page 9 of your papers so just to, to place these items on, on record members content that the proposed actions in the clerk's memo were acted upon accordingly Okay, thank you. Then item three is matters arising. There are no matters arising. Okay. Item four then is the standing orders on temporary the temporary provisions. So at our meeting on the twenty fifth of March, you recall that as a matter of urgency the committee agreed a draft motion to allow committee business and plenary business to proceed during the pandemic. Subsequently, on the 27th of March 2020, the Assembly agreed the Committee's motion by cross-community support. Members should take note that since the temporary provisions have been in place, no requests have been received to make any emergency amendments to the temporary provisions. On the 1st of July 2020, the Committee wrote to all parties and independent members and to its counterparts on other local legislatures to seek their views on proxy voting. The Committee received three responses. In your packs, the clerk's cover note is at page 15. The committee motion agreed is at page 17. An email from the Alliance Party, which suggests an, amen an amendment to proxy voting, is at page 22. A response from the Scottish Parliament Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee is at page 23. A response from the House of Commons Procedures Committee is at page 25. There was a response from Claire Sugden, MLA, which is, which is at page 26, and a response from the Business Committee at page 27, and a draft committee motion to extend the temporary provisions at page 28. Are members content to note all of those items? Mm -hmm. Okay. At page 3, then, of our tabled items, the Clerk to the House of Commons Procedures Committee has forwarded the committee's report on its review of proxy voting. Are members content to forward a copy of this report to the speaker for information only? Okay. Given that the temporary provisions ceased to have effect on the 30th of September, which is only a matter of weeks away now, not even two weeks, the committee should consider the following options. So these are the options on, on what we should do around those temporary provisions. The option number one is to agree a motion to extend the provisions for a set period and consider any amendments at a later date. Agree to extend the provisions for a set period with amendments 
or three, do nothing and allow the amendments to cease to have effect after the 30th of September 2020. So obviously we're still in the middle of the, the pandemic and it's far from over. And given that we have such a short period of time, I'm proposing that the committee agrees to extend the temporary provisions to the 31st of January 21 without any amendments. I also propose that the clerk writes to the, his counterparts in the Assembly Committees to ask if they are content with the current provisions or whether they have any suggested amendments. The committee can then consider whether to amend the temporary provisions at a later date. I um, suppose just from my own point of view, this was raised at CLG that, um, on Tuesday and everybody was content that, that option one be the option that we go forward with and that is that the provisions um, are extended to the 31st of January 21 but I would still like to hear the views obviously of our committee members. Jerry. Yeah, sure, it makes sense to me to extend it. Um, as you said, the pandemic, you know, second wave, we, we either were in one or we're about to be in one uh, and all that. So I think, you know, it makes it easy for me as a Belfast MLA to get here and understand that you know, it isn't for others. So I think it makes sense to have uh, a long term proxy provision and um, a call in facilities for, for all committees. Uh, it would be useful. To just a question. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I've just seen Claire Shugden's correspondence, I know it was a previous um, item agenda, but mm -hmm. I mean, I just got a fair point. I mean, I, I think obviously for the bigger parties, it's, it's fairly straightforward. You know, you've got a, you know, a plethora of people to choose from to give your, your vote over to, essentially. Um, I, I'm an individual MLA of a party. Um, it could affect me, but thankfully I haven't been in a, in a position of, of difficulty so far. Um, but it could, maybe independents who are... Uh, unable to or unwilling to kind of transfer their vote temporarily cause issues for them. So, um, you know, like I said, it hasn't, and it may not affect me and, our, and my party, but I think it is important just to take some cognizance of that. Um, so I don't know if we can reflect that yeah, in I, the, the voting chair or what. Or I'm not sure, and, and I'll ask Nick if there is a way of reflecting. I, I actually asked, there was one, one of the questions I asked Nick the other day before the meeting today, were there any concerns, particularly from the independents and the smaller parties you know or were they content how things were working because I had the same concern you know at the end of the day you're having to trust somebody who's not from within your party to, to give your vote but the same thing can happen within parties where you maybe have have got a free vote that's not something that happens in my party so it's not something that I have to worry about but but in fairness it is an issue for others and I had even asked you know can you change who the person you nominate is so for example, if you were voting on some a particular issue and you knew for absolute certain that I was voting the way you were voting, so you have total confidence that I'm going to want your vote for that to, to go the way I want to go, then can you change? And I was assured that is possible, but that doesn't remove all the concerns. So mm -hmm. I am going to let Nick just come in and see if there is as a way of addressing that. Then. So the <clears throat> on the specific issue of proxy voting, that's something actually that we'll come to later on mm -hmm. because when we go into closed session and look at our strategic planning, one of the areas that we specifically can look at is proxy voting because the Speaker has written to us about that. So I think, yes, it, it, it's something that the committee can, if they choose to, look at, but perhaps we'll discuss that a little later on when we... Yeah, let me show and just family chair on, on that. I mean, I think it's, from my perspective, you know, like I said, thankfully there haven't been any issues. You know, I hope that if I was in a situation where I had to transfer my vote, it would be sort of swimmingly and no issues, but... I think Claire's got a point that you know somebody who's an independent maybe doesn't want to be attached to <coughs> parties who may vote in her correct allocated way. But I think there's just there's a you know in the middle of a pandemic, um, obviously. But you know, I think it needs to be provision that you know independent, smaller, you know people who are not in this in the sort of the big schemas of politics um, are reflected. So I just think if we could do that, then that would be helpful to just how the assembly is is seen by by. No, I agree. And my concern was that if you had given your vote to somebody, you can always check that afterwards. But after the fact, it's too late. And at that stage, then do we go into all sorts of grey areas and, and difficult, maybe legal challenges and all, all sorts of things? So, um, I agree. It is something that we absolutely need to to look at and see if there's a way of of dealing with that. Do any other members have questions? Any questions? Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Um, no, I have no problem, uh, our party has no problem, sort of the temporary provisions being, being moved forward to the 31st of January 2021, but certainly we would not like to see proxy voting going on for 
heifer. But as you say, we're going to discuss that later moment. That's okay. Okay. Sorry, there's a bit of feedback. Sorry, I'm one of the calls. Sure, here it is. Yeah. Thanks, Janet. Thanks, Janet. Yeah. Yeah. They need to go on to mute. They need to go on to mute. Maybe those who are in Starleaf, unless you're going to come in, if you can put. Thank you, Great, Chair. Thank you. Um, no, firstly, because it's our return back, welcome to your role, albeit temporary. Thank you. Um, but I would like to go on record to thank Nick and team, because that was very swift work in putting together those Stanton orders um, and provision. And it has worked. It has largely worked. And I know those nuances that Jerry rightly picked up. You know, th that wasn't the time to, to even begin to do that. So I just want to thank it. And certainly we are happy to do that extension. But I do think there is value in looking at this beyond, um, because there are things around illness and disability issues, and there are a lot of provisions that we have never allowed for. And this mechanism certainly shows what can be done when the will is there. And it's certainly not something I would just want to dismiss outright, but we're, we're in the midst of COVID, so it makes sense that we extend. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, just on that too, uh, you know, uh, as all the parties have said, we're happy to uh, extend this to the end of January, and I know there are other issues are going to be looked at, and, and we will look at them in due course. But um, on this particular issue, yeah, we're happy to extend it to that. Okay, um, that's great. Okay, so are members content then that we proceed to extend the temporary provisions to the 31st of January, 2021? Okay, we're agreed. So, are members content then with the draft motion at page 28 of your papers? I'm going to assume no noise means agreed. <laughs> no no disagreement is going, to be, is going to be accepted as agreement. Um, so, members are content then that, that the clerk write to his counterparts in the Assembly Committees to ask whether they are content with the current provisions. Okay. And... We're content that the committee consider any amendments to the temporary provisions at a later date. So we will be looking at, at those issues, um, Jerry. So item five then is correspondence at page 30. Members will find a, a memo from the clerk in relation to items of correspondence received. Are members content to note the clerk's memo? Content. Okay. And then just want to draw your attention to a number of items at page 44 of your tabled items. The speaker has written to the committee seeking an update on its approach and anticipated time frame for taking forward those parts of NDNA in which it will have a role to play. This includes the development of standing orders to enable members to participate in assembly business in Irish or Ulster Scots. Members will recall that the committee's current posi position is that NDNA is a document between both governments and signed up to by the executive parties. The committee decided that it was for either government or the executive to bring forward proposals, either through legislation or otherwise, to action the commitments in NDNA. The committee would then consider any appropriate changes to standing orders. Are members content then to note this item of correspondence for now mm -hmm. and include it as part of the strategic planning discussion in the closed session later in the meeting? Intent. Okay. At page 36, the Speaker has written to the committee to ask that it considers placing the budget setting methodology on its forward work programme. A section in the methodology entitled Interaction and Audit Committee refers to standing orders as the mechanism to give effect to the processes set out in the methodology. Are members content to consider this issue as part of its revisit to strategic planning, which will take place in the closed session at the end of today's meeting? I'm right to the speaker to advise him of any decision we then make. Content. At page 42, the Justice Committee has written to the committee regarding Westminster Acts containing provisions on devolved matters yet to be commenced. It asks the committee to consider whether there is a need for a memoranda, a mechanism rather, to be put in place to establish the views of and consent from the Assembly regarding the commencement of provisions and acts relating to devolved matters were if the legislation had not already completed its passage through Westminster, an LCM would be required. So there was a wee anomaly just in, in stuff that came before the Justice Committee, which might never happen again, but it, it raised some questions on 
for that reason, obviously. So are members content to consider this issue as part of its review of the LCM and to write to the Justice Committee to inform it of the Committee's decision to include this issue in its review? Okay. Page 53, then, the Chief Executive has written in response to the Clerk regarding the Committee's request for information on what action has been taken to enable accessible options to be introduced for members with sensory impairments, in particular the Assembly Chamber. Um, as a reminder, Kelly Armstrong, MLA, wrote to the Committee on the 12th of May 2020, asking it to review standing orders to enable inclusive, accessible communication methods to be permitted for both plenary and all committees. Are members content to forward the Chief Executive's correspondence to Kelly Armstrong and confirm that the committee is not minded to amend standing orders at this stage, but will do so should the Assembly agree to introduce hybrid proceedings? Are members content for the remaining items of correspondence to be actioned accordingly as set out in the correspondence memo? Okay. Any questions in relation to any of the correspondence, or we're, we're content? Okay. Agenda item six then is our forward work programme. So there is no forward work programme to consider, as the committee will be revising its strategic planning in closed session at the end of today's meeting. Are you content? That's how we move forward. Agenda item eight is any other business. Um, do any members have any other business that they want considered? I'm just, I've just become conscious that I'm rallying on and I'm probably not giving anybody that's in Starleaf a chance to put their hand up. But sure, I, do, I, I can see how it fits into the forward work programme, so I'm content. It's just a not new decade, new approach stuff, yeah. but I think it's going to yeah. we'll, we'll cover that. Absolutely. And then agenda item nine is just our date and time for our next meeting. And again, that will be considered in the closed session of today's meeting um, and our strategic plan and just how we move forward with our meetings. So are members content with that? Okay. That's our meeting going into closed session. 30. This is